Okay, well, thanks for joining us this morning at the Bainbridge Island Senior Center, something to talk about. And, you know, always please consider adding uh, the Senior Center to your giving to One Call for All. And this morning, it is my pleasure to introduce Don, uh, Dan Hamlin. He is with the Bainbridge Island Parks and Rec Department. And uh, we're sort of going to talk about some wildlife here on the island, aren't we, Dan? Yes. Yeah. So I'll well, take it away, sir. Okay. Well, first first and foremost, uh, cougars, bears, owls, coyotes, all the sorts of animals that we get calls and concerns about are a natural part of our forests. They live there. Um, that's where they're supposed to be. Um, and then that human uh, uh, wildlife interaction that's not so pleasant at times uh, out of uh, a lack of information uh, primarily um, raises concern in the community. Uh, the recent uh, issues with the cougar that has attacked a goat we know of and was seen on camera trying to get in with some other uh, sheep um, uh, raises a lot of alarm, uh, They especially when they're in known public spaces like the Grand Forest. So, but first and foremost, uh, you're generally not going to see them when you're out there, and there are some specific things you can do to avoid seeing them. Um, uh, but I'll start with the, the fact that you, you can tell if they've been around, so if you see their scat, uh, their, um, uh, uh, when, they, when they relieve themselves on the trail, you'll, you can see that. It's uh, about one inch in diameter, uh, it looks different than a coyote, it's bigger. Um, it resembles more of uh, dog feces. Um, but uh, you'll probably more often see tracks uh, if they're walking in some very soft, mud or uh, dirt but generally you won't see sign of a cougar at all excuse me and um uh which is a good thing you don't have to get alarmed um but when you're hiking if you want to avoid seeing them it's best to be you know with another person or in a group keep your group uh together don't sprawl out on the trail um, especially uh, important when you know that there's been cougar sightings to keep your children in front of you and close to you. Um, uh, a hunting animal will look for the weakest among and wait for some separation. So keep, keep yourselves in a, in a tight group. Um, and, and another important fact is keep your dogs on leash. Because again, if a dog gets out ahead of you or trailing behind, it becomes prey. Uh, so it's important to keep them on leash. Um, you don't have to yell or scream, but talk. You want to announce your presence as you're coming up the trail. A cougar will avoid humans. So if they know you're coming, you're not going to see them. Um, and uh, if you do happen to actually see one, and it isn't just running away, because that's typically how you will see them, uh, make yourself large. You can open your coat. Um, if you take a walking stick, it would be uh, advised to have a trekking pole or a walking stick with you. You wave your arms and wave that, and then you speak to it, go away, go away. Um, that typically will alarm them enough to make them turn and, and leave. Um, I think that's about what we've got on the cougar. Now, the cougar that has been spotted has, you know, there's been, the rumor mill starts to spread around and we start to hear that there were you know multiple sightings uh, or multiple cougars we're not we're not uh, we don't have any evidence that there's more than one and we don't have evidence that even some of the sightings or reports were actually a cougar uh, fish and wildlife have been notified and they are working with the folks that did actually have real encounters with the uh with the cougar that was on the island they're not sure if he's a permanent resident or if he was just passing through. It was a young male, probably just uh, uh, got out on his own, and he's kind of looking for his own spot to live. And he's learning how to do that, interacting with humans. So with that, that's what we know about the cougar. Um, and we're staying, staying in, uh, attuned to the reports, and we're putting up signs to warn people uh, to do the things that I recommended, walking in groups, <clears throat> keeping your children close, and your dogs on leash. Are there questions? Let's see. Any hands up? <clears throat> I put a hand up. 
Okay, read. So I'm wondering, I've seen, as you said, a lot of uh, chat on Facebook about cougars here, cougars there, cougars everywhere. Um, <laughs> uh, do you, can you tell us about any, like, do you, you apparently have evidence that there was a cougar, at least for a while, maybe not there anymore, uh, in the Grand Forest, is that right? Uh, yeah, just near the Grand Forest, just south of the Grand Forest, we had a confirmed, uh, uh, they found the remains of a goat. On and, uh, and you could, t and, and, and by all indications, that's the critter that did in the goat. Yeah, that is one of the uh, things you could come across is a deer or some uh, animal that the cougar has killed. They will cover them up uh, to come back and feed on it later. Mm -hmm. And uh, and is there an indication that 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 I mean, have does it look like maybe the cougar is not active right now on the island, or do we know? We do not know. Um, we have not received any recent, like within the last week or two, uh, sightings or confirmed actual encounters. Right. You know that when the animals are penned up, they're they're an easy opportunity for food, and so. Because cougars would naturally eat rabbits and deer, and so right. so that that's one thing that the farmers on the island need to be aware of. So, yep. Anybody? Yeah, animals, will, animals will also let you know. I mean, if they're agitated, and um, I was just down uh, in on a farm, and the horses on the farm started really acting erratic and running around and that was the first thing we thought of was a potential cougar. This was not not on Bainbridge Island but another location. Somewhere but, else, yeah. But Jim, an animals, your dog, if you're walking with your dog and it just starts acting like, you know, nervous or excited, um, it could be a sign that there's something around. Uh, it could be a cougar, it could be a bear or the coyotes. The coyotes are much more likely on Bainbridge right. Island. Jim. Oh, we can't hear you, Jim. Are you muted? Jim, you're muted. Yeah, I say, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm not used to pushing two things. The uh, We've lived here for about 43 years, and the, the most dangerous thing we've come across were packs of wild dogs that just were neighborhood dogs all packed together and, 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 a, and a drunken crow. Uh, I'm just wondering, Dan, if, if, if these sightings are unique, uh, is this something that's that's new or is this normal? I understand that their their that their habitat is shrinking uh, because of the the, the building that's around here. But are we have? Let's go back five years ago or ten years ago. Didn't we have uh, uh, the same uh, you know the bears and the cougars and coyotes and so forth on the island at that time? Um, they are a normal part of. Uh, the interactions. I've worked here for 15 years, and there's been there's been several cougar sightings um, on the island. Uh, this one, I, I would say, this one a little more alarming with the actual confirmed uh, attacks on uh, livestock. Um, but there definitely have been cougars on the island over the last several decades, uh, and typically they, they somebody sees one, it gets confirmed. Every once in a while, a picture has been uh, taken, and um, uh, and then it, it causes all kinds of concern across the island. But they do, they are a natural part of the forest and uh, we we walk right by them probably more often than we would like to think. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, June, do you have a question? I do. Um, okay, if you do encounter a cougar and you get big and you tell them to go away, and he doesn't, or do you just pray that he does, or do you start backing up, or do you just stay still? Like um, the uh, the what they tell you when you read up on it is um, you can start to throw things at it. Um, you don't want to back up. You don't want to run away. Um, and uh, but you know it is important to know that cougar attacks are very 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 rare, and typically involve a cougar that uh, may be sick or have other issues. Um, like being hungry, which we know that this cougar is not. <laughs> no. But yeah, that's a great question. Um, and hopefully nobody ever has to encounter that. I've spent a lot of time in the woods and, and talked to a lot of folks who spend a lot of time in the woods. Um, and the cougar encounters that I've heard about uh, have almost never uh, resulted in 
an actual bluff charge or, or an attack. They, they typically always give ground. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Yeah, uh, Larry Knight said uh, 20 years ago, a black bear was seen by us crossing neighbor's yard on the eastern bluff above the sound. So that's still, that's pretty unusual though, isn't it? Uh, black bear sightings are pretty common. We had the, uh, we had the, you know, the local resident bear here, what, a year ago that made it all over Facebook? Seemed to be oh, showing yeah. up. In, yeah, he was showing up in everyone's backyard. <laughs> yeah, bird his, feeders. His biggest crime was uh, destroying bird feeders. Yep. I remember that. Yeah. Boy, I'll tell you. You got to bring your bird feeders in every once in a while. So, hey, Jim, did you have another question? Oh, you, unmute yourself, Jim. Sorry, uh, my, my issue really is with like coyotes. Uh, I mean, we know that they're all around and, 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 and you can see them anywhere. Uh, uh, they're, they're very social and, and uh, what's going on with them? Is, 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 uh, is, 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 this, is, a, is this a problem on the island? Um, well, there are a lot of coyotes on the island. There's not really uh, an issue. Um, as with most of these wildlife and with this specific uh, cougar sighting, it appears to be a young animal. And that's typically the coyotes that we hear the encounters of. They're, they're kind of embarking out on their own and learning to hunt and not sure exactly what prey is. So they'll, they'll go after a small dog. Again, keeping your dog on leash really helps. Um, but there, we have, we haven't had any people attacks, uh, from coyotes, uh, since I've been here or that I'm aware of. Uh, I think it's, it's typically just, they can act a little more brave. They can stand on the trail in front of you. Um, whereas a bear or a cougar typically will be running away from you when they see you. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I remember going to get the mail one time. I lived off of, uh, New Brooklyn back on Grizzdale, and I went down to get my mail. I had to walk to get my mail. And there was um, the coyote walked by there all the time. But we just happened to meet up at the same time. It just walked right by me. But it did do a little grr, like, leave me alone. <laughs> leave me alone. So I, that was, uh, I was like, yeah, dude, I'm, I'm OK. I'm OK with that. So yeah, yeah. They, they, but uh, yeah, we lived, uh, lived pretty well together. So. Uh, Ann Lovejoy, you have a question? Well, I was going to talk a little about my uh, my experience with the um, with the cougars uh, quite a long time ago on the island, but it was actually pretty funny. Uh, <laughs> it was probably 20 years ago, and we just moved to Fort Ward to the officer's quarters up on the top of the hill. It was a really hot summer, and I left the door on all the windows open, and the cat food was in the front hall right by the door and we had several cats at that time and in the night I woke up because I heard our cats growling and doing that thing they do and I walked out in the hall and I saw what I thought was a golden retriever eating the cat food and I grabbed a broom and yelled at it and chased it away and then I looked at its tail going by going Brr. and I was like that is not a dog tail oh my god and the cats were all like running around rubbing against my legs and I was like that's <laughs> and I called the wildlife people the next morning. They're like, oh, yeah, there's a cougar up there. And I was like, probably shouldn't have been chasing it with a broom, right? And they're like, well, they'll usually run away. Um, but I was just really grateful that they ate the cat food and not the cats. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. yeah that's a great example of what we've been talking about. And um, that that's that's typically the encounter you're going to have. A lot of times you will see it and not know what it was too. Cougars are so fast and they, they can disappear into the ferns in our forest really quickly. Oh yeah. I have to say there's been many times, I was uh, with the Parks and Rec uh, walking group with Ron Williamson years ago. And uh, he told us about, you know, and he was very honest with us. He goes, yeah, they live amongst us, you know. They, don't, they do not want to see us. So just keep on moving on. Walk yep. with somebody, and it, it, he said exactly what you did, Dan. It's like be with a buddy, maybe bring a walking stick with you. Yep. Yeah. So that's yeah, just remember that's really one of the reasons that we all live here, right? 
Right. Yeah. We love it. Our forested areas. So um, anybody else have any uh, good stories about bears, cougars? <laughs> Ian has another good story. <laughs> I do. I have a great story about bears. <laughs> when uh, my husband and I lived up in uh, Montana at 10,000 feet when you were, were abandoned, we were caretaking an abandoned gold mine or silver mine that was being, back when the Hunt brothers were uh, kind of cornering the market on silver and a lot of the old mines were being looked at to see if it was worth opening them up again or not. So we were clearing the roof off in the winter from snow and stuff like that, but we were hiking a lot. And we were hiking down in this area in a map and it seemed like every time we went there, we would see bears. And one time we came and there was a bear just walking on the path, like right in front of my eyes. And it walked up and we both sort of turned the corner at the same time and we looked at each other and we both went, Whoosh in the opposite direction. And then <laughs> later on, we were walking there again and here comes another bear down the path and it looks at us and we look at it and I said, oh my God, Mark, we better climb a tree. And just as I said that, the bear looked at us and it jumped about 10 feet into this little sapling and it was so big, it was swinging away on the tree yeah. like this, like it was scared of us. Yeah. And so we turned around and left it. And, and later on, somebody showed us an old map and that area was called Bear Gulch. Ah. <laughs> So it had probably been bear country for a really long time. But again, I was so interested that they were at least as afraid of us. And those were brown bears. They weren't, or black bears. They weren't grizzly bears, but um, but they were not at all aggressive. And neither was I. <laughs> <laughs> Peace. <laughs> Anybody else have a comment? Do you just want animal stories? Is that it? Well, we're talking about wildlife. Sure, Richard. Yes. Well, um, when I uh, travel across the northern uh, route of, of the United States and, and go into uh, uh, North Dakota and Wyoming and places like that, it's very pleasant to uh, see the buffalo and the other American animals that one can see as you travel on Highway 90. Absolutely. Those, those buffalo, I love how they just take over the street, the bison. They just, you know, the cars yes. just stop. You know, you cannot, you just let them go. We had one yes. walking by us and we could see like it's, it's, I don't know, its shoulder came to the top of our car. You know, it, it was like uh, amazing. They're just huge, but wonderful, magnificent beast. I love them. So. And, and they're nice uh, in uh, in the San Francisco Park. We used to live in San Francisco also. We had them there and uh, they were very nice. And then just to, to put another perspective on it, maybe some other people uh, had similar experiences. Um, fortunately, earlier in our careers, Dee Herzog, my uh, wife, ex-wife, and I had an opportunity uh, to travel a lot, and uh, we were on a, a three-week safari in Africa, which was just incredible, an incredible experience. Yeah, I could only imagine. We've had many uh, travel logs, people talking about, you know, the wildlife in other countries, and it's just, just fascinating, because I'll probably never get there myself, so I just love to hear their stories, and your stories, so. But yes. getting back to the island, um, I read an article last week or the week before about us um, birds, a bird die off. We were having uh, finches and um, pine siskins that are dying rather at an alarming rate here in Kitsap County and in other counties. Uh, do you know anything about that, Dan? I do not. I do not. Yeah, uh, what they're asking everybody to do, and uh, I'd like for you to heed this and uh, share it with everybody you can, is that we're supposed to take our bird feeders down. Apparently, they are, um, yeah, they're sharing salmonella, and so it's, um, and they're, they're, they're linking it to uh, birds massing together, and uh, uh, sharing the disease with each other, and unfortunately, there was a rather large die-off. So, so we uh, they were asking us for us to take down our bird feeders for a, a period of time. 
So, Jim. I, I read that article as well, but I can't recall. Uh, I don't think it related to, uh, to hummingbirds. I think no, it was, not the hummingbirds. It was just to uh, um, pine suskins and uh, finches. Yeah, yeah. I, and, okay, thank you very much. That's that's uh, that's uh, will that just naturally go away or what? Hopefully, you know, um, it, it, it's it's an anomaly that happens not every year, but it's when uh, the birds come and they they are uh, they uh, migrate and they oh. come in mass numbers. And they, they pass a disease around together rather easily together. We know about populations passing diseases around right now, don't we? Yes, we do. We certainly do. And so, you know, and, and unfortunately, when they come together at a feeder, they're not socially distancing. Yeah. They are amassing together. And they're doing exactly what they're not supposed to do. And unfortunately, there's quite a few of them dying. So... So just a just an F, you know, for your information, and to let other people know that uh, we should take our feeders down for a while, so they're I, not hanging out together. So I, I have um, I have some information on that. I wrote to uh, my friend Jean Pollock, who's um, the head um, Audubon Society around here, because I thought, well, if anybody knows, he'll know. And he said the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife is advising people to take down the seed feeders, seed feeders, because of a widespread occurrence of dead and dying prime systems, like you said, Karen. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, some people are overreacting and also taking down their hummingbird feeders. Salmonella is unlikely to infect nectar feeders, and many of our wintering annas hummingbirds have learned to depend on these nectar feeders just for survival during hot, harsh weather. Even with pine siskin, salmonella is not always the main culprit. We are in the midst of a massive winter invasion of pine siskins because of the failure of seed and cone crops in boreal forests across Canada. Many of these birds arrive weak and emaciated because they have flown a long way with little or no food. Taking down feeders could add to their problems. Mm. Salmonella is a normal habitat inhabitant of the bird gut, but can multiply in feces and contaminated seed if it is allowed to accumulate on feeder surfaces. The solution is to clean feeders often. That also applies to boldly seed and droppings that accumulate on the ground beneath feeders. In the past, we've advised people to take feeders down for a week or two if they find dead, if they find dead or dying birds in order to prevent sick birds from reinfecting feeders. The dilemma is that starving birds may need this food to survive. If you choose to feed birds, be sure to clean their feeders off and he's president of um, Audubon Society. Um, so I just thought you'd be interested in what he had to say. Um, this applies to all surfaces where feces and old seed. I would asked him about um, the fact that I had a suet feeder, not a regular seed, feeds, seed feeder. <coughs> and he said it applies to both the seed, uh, suet feeder and a seed feeder. Oh, good to know. Uh, so it's a matter of cleaning up below, you know, Right, um, right. Which I need to do today. I need to get out there and throw some uh, bleach on that floor out there, on that yeah. on the ground on, right. on the patio. So, uh, so don't go, don't overreact because unfortunately these birds need it, the food. So oh, if you right. keep it clean, then you're going to be okay, according to Audubon. Yeah, I figure they know. That's what my son said. My son yeah. lost. Well, and we've got a lot of other things that those birds can eat too, right? I mean, we've got plants that, at least, as Anne might say, if you haven't cleaned up your gardens too much, yeah. there's still edibles around in your in your uh, plants. Larry Knight said yesterday I saw a red light bird that came out of from under our neighbor's hedge and it scrambled away, acting injured, much like. A, a later in the spring mama leading it away from nest. We do have a popular feeder for that size of bird. Yeah. So it could be one that's infected, uh, Larry. So you, you may want to take it down uh, for a while and sterilize it with some uh, uh, bleach, 
I think it's five parts water, one part bleach, something like that. I forget, something like that. It's on the um, um, Kitsap County website, uh, Kitsap Sun. So uh, they'll, you could read up about it. And um, it, because we need to, we need to take care of our feathered friends too. So anyhow, any other questions? No? Well, Dan, thank you so much. Do you have any words of uh, wisdom before we part? Oh, just just follow the uh, follow the advice uh, on how to co coexist with the, our friendly uh, forest uh, creatures and enjoy the parks. Yes. Yeah, thanks very much. Uh, I much I feel much safer. Right. Yeah, and better informed. Yes. Great. Right. Between understanding our uh, our friends that live in the forest and uh, and that we are getting vaccinated, I think we're all feeling a little more relieved today. So, so well, thank you all for joining us and uh, have a great day. <laughs>